Blender 5.0 comes with six new modifiers. There's Scatter on Surface, Instance on Elements, Randomize Transforms, Curve to Tube, Geometry Input, and a new version of the Array modifier. We would call this the new phase of modifiers if we hadn't already got over our phase phase a couple of phases ago. You can add these new modifiers to an object just like you would any other by going to the Modifier tab of the Properties panel. But when you do that with one of these new ones, behind the scenes, something different is happening. Blender is actually modifying your object using geometry nodes. But don't panic if you don't do nodes. That's the whole point of these. A powerful set of node trees accessible as pre-packaged modifiers so you don't have to deal with something like this. We'll get back to the significance of this later, but first I'm going to speed run a demonstration of what these new modifiers can do. Let's start with Curve to Tube. I'm going to add it to this curve. We can tell it's adding a Geometry Nodes modifier because we can see the Geometry Nodes icon with its four snaking dots. With this modifier, we can convert a curve into a round cylindrical mesh. Or we can select custom curve objects to create meshes with custom profiles, like a Bezier curve line for a ribbon, or a cogwheel to make tubes that look like that stuff on the top of birthday cakes. Other options are a resample menu so we can resample the curve in all the ways that curves can be resampled before it's turned into a mesh. The caps option allows you to style the ends of the tubes and there's the option to generate a UV map. So for those of you who have long harbored the ambition to make a Tim Burton fan film, now is the time. For our next modifier, we are going to look at Instance on Elements, which is the first of two new Instances modifiers. With this one, we can instance an object onto the modified object at each of the selected element type. For all of the elements, there's the option to realize the instances or to discard the original mesh if it never really meant anything to you in the first place. But we're not just limited to individual objects because we can also instance from a collection. This instances each object in the collection on each element or using the Pick Instance option, randomly picks an instance for each element governed by the seed value. There's two other transform controls. The surface offset lets us translate the instances along the elements normal, and we can control whether or not their rotation is aligned to that normal. If, however, we want to randomize the instances transformations, we can use randomize transformations. Blender 5.0's third new modifier has randomization settings for offset, rotation, scale, and flipping. Next, if the Instance on Elements modifier is the model of military precision, Scatter on Surface is a bumper car full of cats, because it may have the same object or collection option, the same transform menu, and the option to pick an instance, but this one is all about distributing instances on the surface of your object. We can set the density method as either the number of instances per square unit or simply as the number of instances. With density, there's a choice of two distribution methods, random or Poisson disk. Of the two, Poisson disk is more sophisticated not just because it's French, but because with it we can set a minimum distance between the instances. Density, combined with transform settings, gives us quite a lot of control over what this modifier does. But if we want to truly direct its distribution, it's this setting that we should be yelling at. Sure, it's a cool slider, but its true power comes from its input attribute toggle, 
I'm going to demonstrate the enormity of this power by entering weight paint mode and adding a new vertex group which I will name Scatter. Then do some light, non-committal weight painting. Back in object mode, I will toggle the input attribute toggle and select my new Scatter vertex group. Now the distribution mask is controlled by the weight that I paint in that vertex group. And if you're one of those people who actively avoids weight paint mode due to past trauma, there's also the option to control masking with images. And we have the same randomizing options as the randomized transforms modifier. Next, we have a feature that's the exact opposite of Netflix, in that it doesn't do much, but it does it very well. With Geometry Input, we can add the final geometry of other objects into our object, again as an object or collection. By default, it adds the inputted geometry as an instance with its origin at the origin of the inputting geometry though its transforms can be maintained with the Relative Space option. I'm going to select Replace Original because, yes, you've probably already guessed, we're about to look at the Array modifier. Or Modifiers because now there's two of them. Array is the new modifier made with geometry nodes, and Array Legacy is the one with a score by Daft Punk. The new Array has four ways in which we can array. There's the Line Mode, where we can offset Translation, Rotation and Scale. Circle Mode, which arrays the modified object in a circle with controls including Radius, Axis and Count. Curve continues the literalism of the other two modes, allowing you to select a curve object to array the modified object along. Like all good legacy sequels, the new array is not an exact recreation of the existing one, and though it does have pretty much all the same beats, they're served to you in a shiny new state-of-the-art package. For example, though you can still use the inputs in the old way, now you can also control these values with widgets. Being tactile, this can be a much more intuitive experience. Now, given that all of these modifiers are made with geometry nodes, it would make absolute perfect sense to be able to access them in geometry nodes. Well, of course, you can inside new node group assets with the same functionality as the modifiers because they are the modifiers. In the world of geometry nodes, these assets are additions to the Essentials collection, and I'm pointing this out in a video about modifiers because there's two that haven't been added to the modifier menu. So come with me as I add a geometry node modifier to a cube so I can show them to you. In the geometry node editor, I'm going to press Shift A to open the add menu and then search for smooth geometry. Then I'm going to take the node group and hang it between the input and the output. Then some rearranging because it would be helpful if we had a 3D viewport. Thank you. The Smooth Geometry node group smooths geometry. You can set the weight of the smoothing and the number of times it's applied. With Displace Geometry, there's a bit more going on. You have control over the displacement strength and the choice of either using the geometry's normals or an offset vector for the direction. I'm going to use Noise Texture for the offset vector and drive the Noise Texture W with Scene Time Seconds and this time modifying a multicolored mesh. With Substeps, we can apply the displacement in steps. The strength gets divided by the number of substeps, then that amount of displacement is applied in each one. This doesn't seem to make that much difference, but the reason you'd want to do this is because geometry nodes in Blender 5.0 now have closures. As implemented with this socket, a closure will allow us to insert an operation at the end of each substep. In this case, it's going to be an operation inside a closure zone inside another node group. 
So now, at the end of each substep, after the mesh has been incrementally displaced, the mesh islands are randomly translated. I may have gone a bit too crazy on the geometry nodes of it all at the end there. Sorry. But I have a video on closures and bundles if you are interested. Anyway, so those are the new modifiers in Blender 5.0. There's not much left for me to do here other than keep talking in the hope that you won't go away. Oh yes, a massive thank you to my Patreons, who now pay for all my biscuits. It's not a huge amount of biscuits, but it's significant to me. Thank you. Bye. Bye, 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 b